so it's interesting how a lot of times when we're offended, it's not because somebody's done something mm -hmm. to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's because of the way we're taking it or because our expectation wasn't met. And maybe they didn't even know that we had that expectation of them. Hi, friends. Welcome to Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where my friends and I talk about God's Word and the real stuff of life, and we hold nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky with Aaron Cluley, Jay, and of course, Joyce Meyer. We're all in different stages of life. A young career woman and mom to two sweet kiddos. An accomplished songwriter facing an unexpected new life's journey. A leader, creative, and author with a heart for adventure. And a world-renowned Bible teacher whose personal story has impacted millions. And there's you. Because sometimes you just need to talk about life with your girlfriends. So consider yourself one of us, and let's talk it out. Hi, friends. Oh. I was just taken back by how beautiful you all look. Just fabulous. Come on in here. And all of you in here, too. You're all looking you very so surprised. good. I'm like, wow. What just happened? I was just caught aback oh, wow. by their beauty. I mean, they look great. Yeah. It, it really is amazing. It is. I think everyone needs to be told how gorgeous they are because we never see it in ourselves, do we? So but true. they don't yeah. have my rhinestone jeans. They don't. <laughs> Joyce no. is looking fine Honey, today. She's looking got good. Rhinestones down her jeans. She's got this hot pink jacket. And when hot, I say hot, I mean hot. Hot pink. Hot pink. Yeah, blue nails. Blue, blue nails. nails. She is. I do need to know, Joyce, do you need your toes and your fingernails to match? Do yes, they need to be the absolutely. same color? Absolutely. They have to match. Okay. I don't. People feel very strongly about that. I know. I don't do well with not matching. Okay. That's funny. Thank I you. have to be the opposite. Me too. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> the way she said that. I'm not surprised by that. <laughs> no, that doesn't surprise me at all. Like each one of my fingers is a different color. So. Yeah, well, that doesn't surprise <laughs> me. <either. laughs> but see, I, I'm being a little bit more mature. Uh huh. In so many ways. Than the rest of you. <laughs> I am still from that era where you just matched. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It looks good on you, though. And I have a hard time not matching. I actually. You're going to laugh, but I even, I have to have, my pajamas have to match. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cute. Now, so Joyce's pajamas look better than most of my normal street clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I saw one leopard one that I was like, yeah. is that an, I'd wear that as an outfit. Uh -huh. yeah. Heels on with it and yeah. I'd be out the door. Penny helps me unpack on the road and she said, sometimes I can't tell what are your clothes and what are your pajamas. <laughs> Do you, you, you switch it up every night? Though. Oh yeah, I wear a different pair every night. Okay. And they, they got to be no wrinkles. And, no you know. wrinkles. Do you iron your pajamas? I steam them. Ooh. <laughs> Good treatment. <laughs> my pajamas are sharp sharp better drawer. treatment than most of my clothes. <laughs> Even though they get wrinkled right away, I have to start out. Okay. Yeah. With everything right. That's so interesting. Have you always been like that? Pretty much. Yeah. Wow. That's it's, great. It's just so organized it and is. like detailed and. But I'm not that way about everything. It's just like. It you, says a lot, though. It does. Yeah, I just. Do you iron your sheets? No. Your bed sheets. Okay. No. But I do like to look good when I go to bed. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Joyce, why not? I'm sure Dave appreciates that why too. Not? <laughs> no, I take my makeup off, so I don't look too good. But, but, but I still look good, huh? But. Well, today, we are talking about something that is going to set a lot of people free, yeah. I think. It's yes. so important. And when we get down to the nitty gritty of it, it is something that we deal with probably every single mm -hmm. day in one way or another. Mm -hmm. We're talking about offense and how not to be easily offended, how to choose not to take offense. Yeah. Um, there are so many aspects of this topic, but we're going to start with Joyce teaching us a little bit about what offense actually means, and then we are going to dig right in and help all of us not live in it. Now, the Webster's Dictionary says offend means to displease. It means to make angry, but I like this. It says it expresses less than to make angry. It's like it in the beginning, it's a smaller thing than to be angry. That's why we have to get it when we first feel it. And, and you know how it feels. It's just like, it's just that little. 
You just kind of curl your nose up and a little bitter taste. <laughs> Actually, the truth is, is love is not easily offended. It's amazing how many things we could solve in our lives if we would just focus more on walking in love with other people. 1 Corinthians 13, 5, we need to read it. Love is not conceited. It's not arrogant and inflated with pride. Love is not rude, unmannerly, does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way. It is not self-seeking. Here it comes. It is not touchy. <laughs> are fretful, are resentful, and it just keeps getting stronger. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. What kind of things tend to offend us? Somebody doesn't appreciate my work. Somebody ignores us. I'm not included in something that I think I should have been included in. Somebody disagrees with me. Someone doesn't meet my expectations. Somebody's inconsiderate. Have to wait in line for someone who's moving a little slow. <laughs> waiting in traffic. Somebody swerves into your parking place you've been waiting on. Not having our opinion appreciated. People who don't believe the way we do. <laughs> Even about the God that we all serve. You know, if we were better at this message, we wouldn't have 900 different denominations, all who think they're the only ones that are right. I think some of those walls are starting to come down, and I hope and pray that in my lifetime, I'll get to see them come all the way down, because wow, what a force we could be in the earth if we could all just decide to love each other and stop criticizing people who don't think exactly the way we think. Ruckus applause, yeah, so exactly. It's so true. And, yeah. and now, maybe more than ever, there is so much to be offended by. Definitely yeah. more than any other time. Oh, it's yeah. crazy. I mean, of course, we've always had our, our family and our friends who can offend us. Mm -hmm. But crazy. now, yeah, now there's, there's social media. It's yeah. crazy full of offense. There's um, political aspects that, that are nuts, cultural, the church, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. just so many areas that we could really let this sink in and take root. But and so that's why you've taught so much about it. The Bible says in Matthew 24 that in the last days, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. one of the signs of Christ's coming mm -hmm. is that many will be offended mm -hmm. and they'll fall away. So you mentioned earlier that you are more mature. <laughs> so I'm only saying Your it because words. you said it. So in in the years that you've lived, does it feel different now than it does in the past? Like, can oh, yeah. you see people, that shift? People today are definitely much more touchy. Hmm. Um, I mean, say back like when I was a teenager, which has been a while ago, um, People even that weren't believers mm -hmm. were st still nice. Yeah. You know, they had manners. Mm -hmm. like they didn't use bad language in front of a woman. Mm -hmm. I mean, just things that today people don't think anything mm -hmm. right. all about. Like they wouldn't use bad language in front of a woman because it might offend her. Mm -hmm. And if they did, they would apologize. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. And uh, people today are more and more selfish and self-centered and the more selfish we become, the easier it is to get offended every mm -hmm. time something doesn't go the way we want it to go. Yeah. yeah. I do think it has a lot to do with the current state of technology, too. Yeah. You know, we have so many different platforms where people don't just see something. They can also offer their opinion, mm -hmm. right. their unsolicited opinion, right. you know. And without any kind of retribution. Yeah, no, no retribution, like, no yeah, filter, no want. anything, you know. And then I saw this other post the other day that said, do you remember when you're when when a teenager would have get to talk to their friend on the phone that they first typically had to talk to their parent first? Yes. Do you like. 
Uh-huh. You, you think of even that. Because like, you call and you, you say. You call a landline. Is and, so-and-so there. You know, and then uh-huh. your mom or dad. And you, so even things like that, you a lot of the generations now yeah, have skipped out true. on a lot of like um, respect even. Those oh, foundations yeah. of respect and honoring people. And, you know, yeah. so it's easier to get offended because people have fewer, they have more filters, but they have fewer filters when it comes to their opinion and respect. I just right. thought that was interesting. Yeah. yeah. That's very true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you look at offense, a, a lot of it comes down to what we think is out of our control because somebody else did it. Mm-hmm. You know, they did this mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. But what we want to talk about today, I guess, is <laughs> that we have a choice. Mm-hmm. Right. Are we going to be offended? How do we deal with things? So what are some of the things that you guys find your touchy areas <laughs> that you get easily offended by? I know I've got plenty. <laughs> That was a little giggle. Go ahead, you go first, well, let's, let's hear about yours first, since you've got so many. <laughs> yes, I asked. So I definitely do. Okay, so w- one of mine you mentioned in your teaching, and that's being left out. I can easily be offended by like, oh, everybody did this, and I didn't get invited, sure. or you know, some so and so didn't tell me something that I thought I should know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's always a decision. Like, okay, am I just going to let this sure. go? Or am I going to let it eat me up from the inside? Because that's what offense does. And here's the other one. (laughs) It's not the only other one, but another one that that comes to my mind. Um, When people don't respect or make fun of the elderly or -hmm. or even not that, just old jokes, I can easily be offended by old jokes. I, I, oh, I was going to start telling old jokes. <laughs> no, no, no. Not just old jokes. But <laughs> no, jokes. I mean, jokes about the elderly. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> jokes about, you know, you're old. And it just, it feels very disrespectful. And I felt that way really my whole life. Well, I'm glad you told me because I had one coming up. <laughs> <laughs> but the older you get to, you know, the, the more you start to hear. And it's interesting because when I first started working here, I was 39 on the day that I started working here. And I was one of the oldest people in in my area that I was in charge of. So right away, it was like all kinds of old jokes. And I'm like, I'm 39. Yeah. Yeah. But then I had to make that choice. And, you know, because I love these people. Mm -hmm. Am I going to, am I going to? laugh and and go on sometimes I would say okay that's enough you know and and other times you think I'm not going to be offended by this right. and yeah. other times I miserably failed and I was just mad all day long <laughs> <laughs> okay well one of my big ones is I am a very good communicator and it really bothers me when people don't communicate mm. it, you can cause so much work yeah. for other people by just not communicating yeah. what what you really want, what you expect, you're going to be a little late, you know, whatever the case might yeah. be. And uh, can you kind of take that personally? Like it, it, it's offensive to you? Well, it just yeah, it just really bothers me when people don't respect me enough to yeah. communicate. There it is, yeah. With me, because when you don't communicate, you are mm-hmm. costing somebody else. Right. Time yeah. and trouble. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of people just aren't natural born communicators, but if you're going to deal with other people, it is something that you need yeah, to absolutely. learn. I mean, how easy is it to say, I'm going to be 15 minutes late mm-hmm. instead of just being late? Mm-hmm. Right. And then half the time, not even saying, I'm sorry I'm late. But I had an interesting one this week. Um, I sent an email to somebody. And it was just, it wasn't anything that required an answer. I was just telling them something about me. Like, I've started these stretching classes. I felt like God put it on my heart. It would really be good for me to stay more flexible. So I'm being stretched with an assistant. In other words, I don't do it myself. Yeah, they stretch me, cool. which... I got my first one this week, and she said, I was just getting to know your body, but I'll warn you ahead of time, next week is going to be a little more intense, so you can all pray for me ahead of time. (laughs) But So I just, I text somebody that's a friend just to tell them what I was going to do, and and here's, here's the thing I want people to understand. I didn't get an answer, and 
it, it bothered me. Hmm. It kept like kind of coming mm-hmm. back to me. Well, you know, but then I realized so often we're offended by our own expectation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. See, I expected yep. them to answer me, but they may be a busy person that looked at that and thought it doesn't require an answer. Mm-hmm. We're all just so different mm-hmm. yeah. in the way that we, you know, like I like somebody to say, oh, that's great, or, you know, have fun, or, you know, I, I at least want to know that you... Nice to hear from you, Gumby. Yeah, yeah that you got my, <laughs> that you, you know, a little heart thing on the top or whatever, just yeah, something right. to let me know that you got it. Because if I don't hear back, if I don't hear anything back, then I don't know if they got it. Yeah, right. I don't know if they don't care. Mm-hmm. So to me, that comes across as a lack of communication. But I really thought about that this morning since this was what we're going to be talking about. And I believe that I have the answer to not being offended. The Share whole it. answer? We pretty, need it. Pretty much. <laughs> we'll take it. Pretty much. You want it now? Yeah, right now. I think at least the largest part of the answer is to always believe the best. Mm-hmm. That is huge. It would change everything if mm-hmm. that's how I mean, it would because I, instead of me thinking that person just ignored that mm-hmm. and just didn't care anything about what I was telling them, yeah. I know it's somebody that loves me, so I don't think they would do that anyway Mm -hmm. but then I thought okay what are the other possibilities well this is a very busy person so maybe they got 25 emails that day yeah and they intended to answer me but then another one came in another one came in another one came in and but it's funny how offense is it's like when you've got that offense in your heart it the thing that bothers you will just keep kind of coming back Mm -hmm. yeah it'll just nag at you a little Mm -hmm. bit a little bit a little bit a little bit and um but i i really do believe that that's the largest part of the answer is we have a choice Mm -hmm. to believe the worst or to believe the best yeah Yeah. to be suspicious or to be loving yeah and even if the other person was being rude to me I'm only helping myself by believing the best. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've had that conversation, my husband and I, so often when we'll get in little tiffs. And if you, if we have stopped and said, back up, like I I am for you, we're on the same team here and and having that same conversation to believe the best about me, my intentions really were good. It's amazing how that kind Mm -hmm. of backtracks whatever you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And it does change. I remember Dave saying to me one time, why do you always act like I'm your enemy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I expect you to be in some times. Well, Dave, he's, he's really, he really, he's a protector. And he really wants to take care of me and make sure that I don't get hurt. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm very independent. <laughs> no. And I, yeah, very independent. <laughs> and so, so I would take it, let's just say like, for example, and he'll even do it now. If I'm going down a set of steps, he'll say, now hold on to the banister. <laughs> Well, at, <laughs> that would hurt me so much. I can walk, thank you. See, like before, I would think oh, I am not stupid. Right. <laughs> you know, I would take it like he thought I was stupid. Yeah. And uh, so it's interesting how a lot of times when we're offended, it's not because somebody's done something mm-hmm. to us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's because of the way. We're taking it or because our expectation wasn't met. And maybe they didn't even know that we had that expectation of them. Yeah. That's yeah. so true. How many times have I said, don't you think I know that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> Because he's trying to be helpful, mm-hmm. but it's really easy to take it in that way that you're offended where it's like, you know, I've, I've got this. You don't have to treat me like a child. When That's not what he's doing at all. I almost got Dave a Father's Day card this year. Because he acts like my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I've started saying, saying, yes, Dad. He'll say, did you take your probiotic this morning? And if I didn't take it, he'll get it and bring it to me and put it in my and mouth. And see, he's, and put it, oh, he, that oh was maybe gosh. one too far. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just. And it, swallow. It's, yes, swallow. Uh, are you drinking water? Yeah. I, was, I was having a little tummy problem the other day, and he said, did you eat sugar after you ate your dinner? And I said, no, Dad. <laughs> but the, the thing that's so interesting is how many years. Yeah. I mean, years 
that would offend me mm-hmm. and yeah. bother me because I totally took it wrong. His yeah. heart was 100% right. Mm -hmm. And I was taking it completely wrong because of insecurities in me. Yes. That's a big word in this, isn't it? My dysfunctional past. Yeah. 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 The thing that causes me to feel offense is similar to what you're just saying. If I am made to feel dumb. Like if you do something that makes me feel stupid or I think that you think I'm stupid, right. nothing causes me to rise up, my nose stick up like you now, said. What do you think? I am stupid. Yeah. <laughs> like I am, a, I am a smart, independent lady. I can do things by myself and I know things. So that, and that is my own insecurity. I can, I can feel that in me. There's something inside of me that causes me to, I don't know, feel not good enough. Or It, it yeah. is really amazing how many problems being insecure causes us. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I never really connected that with offense, but it makes yeah. complete sense. Yeah, insecurity and tr- triggers from trauma, from right. what you said, yeah. like even like your past. There's a reason yeah. why you're this independent woman. Right. You've had to be for so long. Mm-hmm. And so exactly. you, it's a process of growing and, and maturing and living life and letting your guard down to, to be able to receive that love again. Because right. I know even now, like that's yeah. a big deal for me. And so like even one of the biggest things that offend me and irk me and get on my <laughs> nerves is people telling me how I should heal. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> that bothers me, even though I know that they, I guess they mean well, like they want me to be happy or whatever, but you should do this and you should do that. And you should, and I'm like, you should be quiet. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what I'm like I'm, We need to talk about offense because uh, I just, I, I get like that. But a lot of times it's typically when it's unsolicited opinions mm-hmm. or, or, or people trying to be kind, yeah. overly kind about sensitive areas, you know, yeah. that, that we're healing from. And, sure. you know, and another one of mine, which <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a shorter person. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm only five one. Um, and I'm a black woman. And so when people say things that make me feel tiny hmm. or if something that makes me feel like a stereotype, I instantly get defensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, it's like, I'm not, but I am loud. I do know that. Like, I know I'm loud, but I don't like when people tell me that because then I'm like, don't call me a stereotype. Is it because I'm, you know, like, you know what I mean? So it's things like that, that it might even fit my personality and they don't mean any harm, Mm -hmm. but because of triggers from historical things in our country or, you know, just things that I've heard that it could trigger me and make me offended and defensive when it's somebody that, that loves me. Right. And, and it really is me, you know, mm-hmm. so, yeah. Yeah, I think if we really think about it, how many people do you think get up every day and think, I'm going to see how many people I can offend today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can think of a few, maybe. <laughs> right. There's several. That, no, I mean. Not generally. You're right. That yeah. is not Seriously, how Seriously, what I'm goal. trying to say yeah, is, right. is we always take it like, well, you, like you're doing this on purpose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And. They don't even know they're doing it most of the no, time. Exactly. No. That's where, no, maybe they're not using wisdom. Right. You know, like they're giving you advice you don't want. But you can choose to believe they're really just trying to help me. Exactly. Yeah. You know, even though you don't necessarily want to be helped. Mm-hmm. And that was the thing with Dave. It was like he was always trying to help me. And I'm like, I don't want to be helped. <laughs> I can do this myself. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. And uh, I'm a little impatient. Well, no, I'm a lot impatient. <laughs> And so sometimes I had to wait on him to come to help me. Uh-huh. And right. I wanted to it just been done. With help I didn't even want. get you it know. over with. Yeah. Yeah. So help me when I want it right away, but don't help me when I don't. Yeah, right. <laughs> you're going to help me exactly. <laughs> well, you, you, you hit it on the head. If I want your help, I want it right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, you said something that I think is so true is is the way that offense gnaws at you because. Mm. I I can hear something and right away decide I know they didn't mean it that way and move on. But later that yes. night, oh yeah, you start replaying the conversation and then you think, wait, wait a minute, maybe yeah. maybe they did mean it that yeah. way, right. and it just nags at you and mm-hmm. it goes away and comes back. So how do you deal with that? I even Help found me. myself last night. Now this is really telling on myself, but I looked up that email. <laughs> oh, I've done that. Did I not hit send, see, right? Maybe she got caught. No, wait. To see how long ago it was that I sent it. <laughs> to see how many days it had been that they hadn't answered me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and we've so, all done that. We've all got... We've all got our stuff, but this is what this is all about. And, you know, people can take some of this and it can really help them if they will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because the thing is, is... 
by taking offense, and the Bible does say don't take offense. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be offered. Mm -hmm. We can choose to take it or not to take it. But by taking it, we only make ourselves miserable yeah. because I would venture to say 99% of the time, they don't have any idea they hurt our feelings. That's exactly. Yeah. That's and so that, that's one of the things that um, when you said that earlier before we started I mean, you said about taking offense, mm -hmm. like it's our option mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. take it, you know, or to, to like, because we're human and it's natural to say like, oh, this, that hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. That's, that's normal. And if it's someone you love, I believe in Matthew 18 saying, and you know, saying, Hey, that kind of hurt my feelings when you right. said that. Yeah. But I've also, I'm learning, I'm still in the process of learning and I'm growing in this area. When I do get offended when those thoughts, because those thoughts, mm -hmm. like re, like replaying it and then trying to figure out the intention and be like, because she said this and she said, oh, she said that. And, uh -huh. oh, you know, you know, and then it's like, and that's why she did that. And that's what I, he did, you know. And so then I start playing it out. But what I've stopped learned to do when those thoughts keep coming up, I like take a breath. Mm -hmm. and I'm just like, God, like, I, help me. Right. <laughs> help, yeah. help me to let go. Help yeah. me to forgive yeah. and help me to believe the best. Because that's something I love about you, G. Like. You're always just like, I'm just going to try to believe the best. I'm mm -hmm. like, help me. You know, so I literally <laughs> ask for help when those situations come. It helps like, me when I believe the best. Yeah. yeah. Even if I'm not doing it for the other person, mm -hmm. I've learned that everything that God tells us to do in his word is for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's actually just for our, I actually read that in the scriptures this morning, that I'm giving you all these commandments for your good. Mm -hmm. Right. Everything that he tells us is for our good. Mm -hmm. So to believe the best allows me to go ahead and be happy. Yeah. yeah. Even if they intended to be rude to me. Yeah, don't mm -hmm. give them that. Yeah. You know, just mm -hmm. don't give them that. Yeah. yeah. It's stressful to like try to be the investigator, trying to figure out, put all the clues. Oh, yeah. Down. It's it stressful. Yeah. Like, it I'm like... It, 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 man, it's just when you're trying to figure you got out like a cork board, yeah, like trying to put all the pieces and together strings. because that's what happened, and this is what she said that when she saw that, and he said it's just stressful. So like now I'm just like no, like I believe God help me to believe the best yeah, in this sure. situation, help me to let this go because it's it's too Some, much on me. Something else that has really helped me is making the conscious decision. Not to tell other people. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because that's very good. That's when it, you're like, well, maybe I shouldn't feel that way. I'm going to ask so and so. Mm -hmm. And then your friends are going to say, I can't believe they said that because right. we defend one another. Right. But if I don't speak it out loud as an offense, it takes a lot of the power away mm -hmm. from it. And it doesn't give us that opportunity to yeah. hash it over with someone else. Yeah. It's even worse when we try and despair. When we try to spiritualize our gossip Ooh. and say, now I'm only telling you this because I want you to pray. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we do that so well in the church. <laughs> so I, I bet God's going, hmm. Mm, yeah. bet you know. <laughs> just, just to be real honest about this topic, when I was thinking about like, why do I feel offended sometimes? My pride is a really big part of it because in that moment when I, I can feel, Aaron, here's your moment. You, you can let it go or you can pick it up and run with that offense. So it, I can feel very clearly. My pride will rise up and I will think they are wrong and I will not let them off the hook. That they don't know that they're on. <laughs> but I feel like I'm empowering them if yeah. I forget. or if well, I What you're saying them. is really important because pride is a large part of this, just like insecurity. Because, you know, pride kind of says, well, you know... I'm too important for you to treat me that way. It's exactly mm -hmm. what my inside says. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I want you to know mm -hmm. what I know. I yep. want you to know who I really am, not, mm -hmm. not how it seems you're treating me. Mm -hmm. I get that completely. And that all goes back to insecurity, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. It all feeds right back into that. There's an area of uh, offense that I think would be really helpful to people. If you look at the definition, of course, there's several different ones, but... One of them is arguing, heated arguing, mm -hmm. and an angry undercurrent. Mm -hmm. And I think that angry undercurrent is the most dangerous. Mm -hmm. Like I, I attended a church a long time ago that was literally destroyed by strife. Mm -hmm. And the Bible, I think it's in Hebrews, talks about that if you don't get rid of strife, you and your entire fellowship will be eaten up with it. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, a little Pac-Man cancer. It just goes around. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's 
gossiping about the pastor or, you know, you thought you should be the worship leader and you didn't get picked. And so, <laughs> and, but it, it's all that stuff that's behind the scenes. Yeah. yeah. And everybody, mm-hmm. you know, smiles at each other and, oh, praise the Lord, we're all happy. <laughs> and mm. that is the most dangerous thing because, as you know, here, we deal with strife. Yeah. I mean, that was one of the things that God put on my heart when yeah. he called me into ministry is that I was to do if I wanted to be successful was keep the strife out of your life, out of your ministry, out of your marriage. Do what you do with excellence and always be a person of integrity. That's why and, the pajamas are ironed. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. <laughs> and so we have really striven over these years yep. yeah. to keep that here. We still talk about it. It's definitely a priority. It's, it's one of our core values. Yeah. and. If we have somebody working for us that causes strife, and some people do, they just, yeah, they cause strife. Yeah. I mean, they just, they're not smart enough to ever keep their mouth shut. Take offense at everything. About and anything. Then talk about they it. take offense, mm-hmm. and then it goes from person to person to person. And every time you tell somebody something bad about somebody else, you know what I've learned? Even if I don't want to believe it, hmm. they have still affected my yeah. opinion. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. About that person, and it makes it harder for me mm-hmm. to not be suspicious yeah. Yeah. about them. So we're really, it's really dangerous. Gossip is really dangerous. And so that angry undercurrent mm-hmm. just, and it kills the anointing. Yeah, The Bible says in Psalm 133 that where there's unity, yeah. there's blessing and anointing. Yeah, hmm. And so... <clears throat> This, this ministry can't be blessed. <clears throat> there can't be a strong anointing on it, which really, that's what, that's what we have. Right. That's what breaks the bondages off of people right. yeah. Yeah. is God's anointing, which is his presence and power. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, the Holy Spirit is easily offended because he's gentle like a dove. And it, in Ephesians, starting in 429, going you know through... 39, 30, 31, and into the next chapter, it tells you the things that offend the Holy Spirit, that grieve and vex and offend the Holy Spirit. And one of them is this anger and this kind of stuff that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. So if we want the Holy Spirit to be strong on our ministry or on our lives, yeah, then we have to keep the offense out of our lives. Yeah. That's huge. I, I think even what that, that statement that it kills the anointing. I mean, we all want yeah. to be anointed to do what God wants us to do. We want our families to be strong. Yeah, we want to be strong as leaders and mothers and mm-hmm. teachers and in the workplace, whatever it is we need to do. And if, if this is one of those things that squelches the potential right. that God has put in us, then I don't want that. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you read those scriptures about don't vex, sadden, or offend the Holy Spirit, I mean, it really is sad when you think about it, yeah. that He just wants us to be at peace and to love each other yeah. and to trust Him. And, you know, all this hatred and anger and gossip and all the junk that's on mm. social media and the accusations and talking about, saying things about people you don't even know anything yeah. about, it's like... It, it really, really, really needs to stop. Yeah. So in a culture like this, in a time that we're in right now, where we really are living in a society that's just walking on the edge of a fence all the time, right? how do, how do we deal with it? Yeah. What, what things have you guys seen that have been helpful in your own life? I, I just want to say, I think it, it goes along with your question too. Having worked here for a long time, and I remember when I started hearing those words, here's the core values of the ministry. And I thought, oh, well, that sounds lovely. Like, I would <laughs> love that. But I didn't. Lots of things sound really nice. So I thought that just must be something that people say because it looks nice on the building. But <laughs> to see that actually played out every day that I've been here for all those years is exactly what we need to do as a people in society mm-hmm. where we have hard conversations. And if you offend me, I'm going to tell you and we're going to talk about it. We don't let things go and just put a Band-Aid over it. We're going to address it or figure it out, but you don't just pretend everything's okay. And I think that's what that plays a big part in society. And have the conversation with the goal 
of resolution yes. and forgiveness. It's yes. not just, I'm going to tell you because I'm going to feel better. No, it's all about what you your know. heart is. Exactly. How are you positioning your heart when you have this conversation? Well, our staff pastor, Pastor Mike, he's actually in charge of conflict resolution. Mm-hmm. In other words, we're not, we, we can't put up with it. Mm-hmm. I can't, I can't do what God has called me to do mm-hmm. and do it successfully. Mm-hmm. There are too many people in the world that are lost, too many people that are hurting, mm-hmm. that have got wounds on the inside of them that are bleeding and yeah. open sores, yeah. and we're called to help them. And, the, and it's the anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage. Mm-hmm. It's not me. It's not you. It's mm-hmm. not our fancy TV show. It's just, you know, those are all just ways yeah. to get the anointing to people. And really, probably a lot of people listening right now don't even know what the anointing is. Yeah. And that's what's said. It's the presence of God on something mm-hmm. and the power of God on something that makes it work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I always say, I don't do anything fancy. I talk. And if it's not anointed, I'm in trouble. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's that anointing that goes beyond people's brain and gets down in their heart yeah. and convinces them. So we, we will, if we cannot bring somebody out of being strifeful here, we won't keep them yeah. because they'll spread it to somebody else and spread it to somebody else. And how many households, how many marriages, how many siblings, how many places of employment you know, because we have that peaceful atmosphere here, mm-hmm. I mean, we have long, I mean, people stay here. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. we've got, I don't know how many people you have been here. can't get rid of us. 25 <laughs> years and 20 years and 15 years. And we just, we don't have a big turnover rate. And part of it is they love the atmosphere. Yeah. Ginger asked a question, and I think we kind of got off track. You wanted to know what we could do in this society Ginger wants to change yeah. the world over here. To, well, <laughs> to, help, I, to help this situation. Yeah, exactly. And it really, no one of us can solve the whole situation. Mm-hmm. I mean, as a ministry, we can do things like we are doing. You know, like I've written a book for this fall, Loving People That Are Hard to Love. We're talking about this subject today. We're teaching about this. But it has to be an individual decision. Mm-hmm. That people make. Mm-hmm. And so each of us have to make it for ourselves, yeah. hoping yeah. and praying that what we're saying today is, I hope some eyes are being opened and people are seeing, oh my gosh, that's why we're having all these problems. Yeah. And see, people, you can have that angry undercurrent, that hidden strife in your family, Mm-hmm. And I can tell you, it will affect the blessings on your life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so then people wonder why they're not blessed or, you know, things are always breaking down in their house or, you know, and I mean, I, be- I believe that we open a door for the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. When we stay in strife because yeah. God loves us. He forgives us. He's merciful. He always is the God of a second chance. He believes the best in us, Mm -hmm. and he expects us to give to others what he's given to us. Yeah. With with the way things are right now in our world, I can watch the news at home and get offended very, very Mm -hmm, quickly. Um, We were recently on a vacation, and, you know, they have all these cheap T-shirt shops for, you know, gifts to take home or whatever. And I saw T-shirts that I was offended by. I mean, they were <laughs> ridiculous right. T-shirts. And what they said, it was just so offensive. I've had the same thing. Happen. Oh, and, and yes, there's righteous indignation. Right. I mean, some some of that is, is different. But there comes a point where we can let so many things grab onto our lives and just keep us in yeah. an offended state of being. Mm-hmm. And what I've really had to... To figure out is that in the beginning, offense has shallow roots. So if I keep pulling it out, then I'm so much better because those roots can get really deep. And then if if I pull out offense right away, I don't have to deal with deep forgiveness issues That's later. Good. Yeah. So it's it's something that that I've had to find in the way the world is today, yeah. and and everything else, just life in general. Like we were talking about, people who don't mean to mm-hmm. say things the way that I take them, mm-hmm. just pulling those little tiny 
little tiny weeds out before they become great big giant rooted trees. Yeah. And you know what? People in the world that don't know Christ, they are hurting so bad. Mm-hmm. And a lot of what comes out of them is just out of their own inner pain. Right. And it is really good if you can grow to the point of, I don't know, say you get a cranky clerk. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, really, when you go in a store and you're going to spend money there, I mean, you should be treated respectfully. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't always happen. Sometimes people are grouchy or cranky or whatever. And how much easier is it just to believe, you know, I have no, I don't know what she's going through right now. Mm-hmm. I don't know, right. you know, maybe... Her husband just left her with four kids, and she doesn't know what she's going to do. Or maybe she just got a report that she has cancer. You know, we don't know why people come across that way. Mm -hmm. And every person that we run across like that, it is an opportunity to tell them, you know, God loves you. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mm. I can see you're having a little bit of a hard day, and I just want you to know that God loves you. Yeah. Well, see, a lot of us don't want to do that because then we might be a little bit embarrassed or, you know, whatever. Sure. But it's we're not we're not helping the situation at all if we just you know right right, right mm-hmm. back at them, which is our natural impulse. Mm-hmm. But you're not going to talk to me that way. Yeah. yeah. One of the things I do when I get encounters like that, I typically find something to compliment them on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's that usually shifts yeah. the environment. That's really, very good. You know, like I, I find something. You're good at that. I, it, 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 like if it's something, especially if it's somebody that I'm like, oh, look, look at your nails, girl. You know, like something like that. That And that small thing. And instead of taking offense in that moment mm-hmm. and giving a compliment, it'll change the whole. Mm-hmm. I had that exact same thing thing happened to me about three weeks ago. I went to get have blood drawn mm. and uh, I have very tiny veins and they roll and there's only a few places where they can really yeah. get blood out of me. And so I started trying to tell this girl where they were. And she said, now let me do my job. <laughs> and so then <laughs> she was going to go somewhere else. I said, you're not going to find a vein there. She said, no. Let me do my job. <laughs> I was offending her. And so then I did just what you said. I, I changed it and I said, how long have you been doing this? And she told me, and I said, I bet you are really, really good at this if you've been doing that that many years. And it completely changed the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. A quick mm-hmm. quick little compliment will yep. change the, mm-hmm. the atmosphere. I do have a question. It's a little, it's a little tough one, though, but... Well, good. Like, Ask it to one of somebody else. I'm looking <laughs> over at you with the hot pink on. <laughs> no, it, but anybody, we t- you talked about it in the clip that we showed earlier about having so much division even in the church. If 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 we weren't so offended, we wouldn't have like you said like 900 different <laughs> denominations. Right. In this day and time, like not only are we at war, it seems like with the world. It seems like a lot of Christians are at war with each other. That's oh, so yeah. true. So what do we do as believers and our friends that are watching? What do we do to help bridge those gaps? Because it's so divided right now. Well, does somebody else want that or do I need to take it? <laughs> <laughs> Look at her fingers. Well, you know. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> when, you're, when you're sitting right here. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to hog the whole show, but I'm, it's I'm got, ready. It's got, it's got <laughs> nobody wants that, right? Nobody if you don't want it, it I'll take it. <laughs> It's all yours. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> the church is divided. Oh, yes. <laughs> See, that's, what, that's what happens when you're mature. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh we're God. very divided and churches against churches, <laughs> denomination against denomination because of uh, government, you know, and different things. There are just things that are dividing us as believers. It, it has to be an individual decision. And all big, amazing, powerful movements start with one person. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so one person can start turning things around. And I think we even need to get bold enough to speak the truth in love. See, we don't do Mm -hmm. much of that either. Yeah. It's like, so if somebody comes to you, like I had somebody call me, it's been a couple of years ago now, and they told me something about 
a minister that's a friend of mine that I know very well. And they said, well, did you know that blah, 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 blah. I said, wait a minute. I said, number one, I do not believe that, not for one second. I don't believe it. But I said, I'll tell you what I am going to do. I'm going to get off this phone, and I'm going to call her and ask her. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and sure enough, it was just a bunch of gossip that it just— And so I called her back, which she really shouldn't have been calling me and telling me anyway. Right. But I called her back, and I said— Whoever told you this, you need to call them and tell them that they're totally wrong because it is absolutely not true. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes we need to, instead of just listening to it, mm -hmm. we need mm -hmm. to get a little bit feisty and say, you know, let's let's don't go there. Let's yeah. let's just walk in love and believe the best, and you know, or let's pray for that person. Mm -hmm. You know, let I, I think we have to. We have to make a decision to not just jump in the middle of it. Yeah. And the problem is, and this sounds awful, but the flesh likes it. Yeah. It, oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It's Gossip, comfortable ooh, there. What? What? Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you heard? What? What? You know, and we need, so I think it has to be a a one-on-one -on -one movement. And yeah. if nobody else does their part, we're still responsible to do ours. Yeah. What you said about the Holy Spirit being grieved. I mean... What could be more effective for the enemy than to get offense just completely wound throughout our churches and our Christian That's people? Right. So, it, you know, it is one of those things that we know we we have to fight back individually, like you were saying, and, and really asking God to help us. And I, I'm always asking God, Lord, help me to know truth, because yeah. truth seems yes. so yes, hidden yes, right yes, now. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Help me to know what you're really wanting me to see. Mm -hmm. And to, for me, a big thing being slow to anger, because I can be angry like that, yeah. praying that I can be slow to anger, slow to speak, but to speak the truth with love right. when I'm yeah. supposed to. Yeah. So just a few things to pray about. Sometimes we do need to just be quiet for a while and pray. I yeah. think we do need to wait on God's timing yeah. and pray for people because many times God will solve the problem mm -hmm. if we don't get in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. But then there is a time yeah. to speak up and to do it in love. Yeah. 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 I do think one of the reasons why and I'm social media is what I do. Like I'm I do marketing too. So like I, I'm I'm not like anti social media. But I do believe that social media does like add fuel to the to the fire. Absolutely. Because I think I <laughs> I told one of my friends who used to really like the gossip. I'm like, that's why you like social media because you're nosy. You know, like <laughs> you just want to scroll and scroll and see so you can see, oh, she had the baby. Oh, the baby is ugly. You know, like, you know, <laughs> like she not just said, like she had something to say. <laughs> oh my. That's Joyce like, almost did a spit take. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me spit my period in the room. <laughs> I'm she just decked the gossip. Like she me. just liked the gossip. She wanted to put her two cents on everything. Social media does a lot of good. I'm grateful I can Absolutely. preach the gospel yeah. on social media. And I believe God gave it as a tool for that. But like everything else, Satan gets in and tries to misuse it. And it really is becoming so sad the things that people say about other people, mm -hmm. and you have no recourse mm -hmm. to fight back. Yeah. And yeah. it's just, you know, yeah. it's not fair. We had, I was just out of town recently, went to Branson for a few days, and I had two different people come up to me and say, oh, I saw your infomercial last night about the diet program you're <gasps> oh, selling. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and so... And we've been fighting this for a while. Somebody's on there selling this diet plan and saying it's mine. And I told And it's them, completely not. So anyone who's seeing not. this stuff, <laughs> yeah. this is a great, a great opportunity to <laughs> <Yeah>. tell everyone. <laughs> it is completely bogus. It I is told them not I said, Joyce. It's a total scam. I am, I am preaching the gospel. I am not selling diet pills. <laughs> that is not what I'm doing. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I'm so glad you told me that. I mean, we've had people call and get mad because they couldn't get their diet pills from us. <laughs> it's true. Well, they're offended by it. Yeah, <laughs> they are. <laughs> that we advertise, and but it, it's not it's just not me. Us. It's happening to other ministers too. Yeah, oh, so it's many. Like, yeah. I feel so sorry for people that that's all they have to do with their time. Yeah. Is, is just sit around and do that kind of stuff and try to cause other people problems. I am so thankful 
that I have got something to do that is helping people. Yeah, yeah. It's a sneaky, sneaky world right now. Yeah. And <laughs> so our, our goal and what we want to leave everyone with, all of our friends who've been talking it out with us, is in this coming week to try to be unoffendable. Right. And it doesn't mean, like Jay said, sweeping it under the rug. It's dealing with the things that we need to deal with. It's believing the best mm-hmm. in people and choosing to be unoffendable yeah. and... Uh, just give it your best shot. Pray that God will help you, right. and we'll see how it goes. But great conversation, y'all. Thank yeah. you very yeah, much. I think a lot of good advice today, and I think a lot of people are going to get some nuggets that are going to really help set them free. I think so, too. And if you want even more, if you go to JoyceMeyer.org slash Talk It Out, we have Joyce's book for you called Do Yourself a Favor, Forgive. It's really good, and it goes really well along with this topic. You can go there and check that book out. And um, we're just grateful that you are all here with us today and looking so good. (laughs) So good. So good. So good. You got to see my jeans. So (laughs) We will see everyone next time. Yeah. Bye. 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 JoyceMeyer.org slash Talk It Out is a wonderful place. Go there for today's resource to check out all of the episodes and to get to know us a little better. Please don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen or watch Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast and let us know what you're thinking. Your voice is important to us.